colleagues on the podium, to the minister, to Dr. Modi, to Dr. Singh, and to greet all of you on this Sunday morning. As the head of the 27 United Nations Agency Funds and Programs that have the privilege of working in India, we're honored to be part of the celebration today of United Nations Public Service Day. All around the world, governments, NGOs, civil society organizations, academic institutions, industry, are celebrating Public Service Day. This is an opportunity for us globally to acknowledge and salute the public servants who work to improve conditions in their countries and who do so in ways which are honorable, efficient, and effective. In the United Nations, we feel that public service is a higher calling, that helping to improve conditions and governance is one of the most honorable and important professions that anyone can aspire to. This is why we hope that young people throughout the world, and very much here in India, commit themselves to the public good and choose to work in public service and public administration. As part of our celebration of UN Public Service Day, the United Nations Public Administration Network honors public service institutions that have done the most to promote better public administration. These are the most prestigious awards given internationally in public service. I hope everyone with us today is proud that state governments in India have won this award year after year for their work to improve public service delivery, improve transparency and accountability, and to expand citizen participation. For example, the Karnataka Revenue Department won this prestigious award in 2006 for putting land records online. The Communications Department in Andhra Pradesh won the award the next year for its highly innovative and successful e-procurement project. As these awards confirm, and as is true in so many areas, India is a world leader in using e-governance to improve public administration. It's absolutely clear that other countries have so much to learn from India's innovations. It's wonderful that we're here today to celebrate and to salute the district magistrates who have helped to reach new standards in public service through innovative reforms at the grassroots level. Allow me to take a few moments and reflect on the importance and potential of e-governance. E-governance literally has the potential to change the way that public administration is done. E-governance can be used to reduce the number of steps required to implement flagship schemes and missions. E-governance can be used to make services easier for people to access. E-governance can be used to monitor the delivery of public goods. E-governance can be used to make rules and procedures more comprehensible and understandable to people. E-governance can be used to spread information on entitlements and rights. In fact, the potential of e-governance to change public administration is almost limitless. But to harness the full potential of e-governance, the UN has done extensive studies which show that three conditions need to be in place. To harness the governance to the new technologies, three conditions have to be in place. First, a broad-based telecommunications infrastructure has to be there. Second, people need to know how to access this infrastructure. And access to the infrastructure has to be either free or very affordable. Thirdly, the content available on the infrastructure needs to be high quality, and there has to be round-the-clock capacity to service the infrastructure. If you have those three conditions in place, then e-governance reforms can reach the highest level. I think everyone should be proud of how much progress India is making in this sector. India has the fastest growing telecommunications market in the world, with a staggering hundredfold increase in the number of internet, internet subscribers in the last decade. 
India is the second largest mobile phone user in the world with over 900 million users. The Ministry of Information and Communication Technology has developed a national e-governance plan which charts the pathway for using information technology to improve governance. India has also put in place a remarkable Right to Information Act and there are a number of state level service guarantee acts and grievance redressal mechanisms which have e-governance components. The Cabinet Secretary's results framework and the citizens' charters are fantastic examples linking e-governance innovations towards making growth more inclusive. The UN in India is proud that we have partnered with the government as far back as 1976 to support the National Informatics Center, which because of outstanding government leadership has offices in every district of the country. Please know that the United Nations stands ready to support universities, the government, state governments, civil society organizations in any way possible as India continues to push forward with e-governance. In conclusion, allow me to congratulate Engineering Watch for organizing today's event. Thank you.